Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Mega Asia webinar. I'm Grace from Mega Hong Kong. Today, our topic is Relay Protection Test Challenges in Renewable Power Plants and Grids. Presented by Mr. Stefan Nelson, who is the Relay Product Manager from Mega Sweden. This is a live webinar. You are automatically muted to prevent any background noises. During the webinar, if you have any questions, please type into the question box, which you can see on the left of your screen. We will answer your questions in the Q&A session. At the end of the webinar, please help us fill the survey, which is on the right-hand side. We will be sending the presentation materials to those committed to the survey. Attendees will be able to download an attendance certificate after they have finished the webinar and committed the survey. And the recording of this webinar will be sent to you in two days' time by email. So without further delay, let's start now. Thank you for joining us today. Stefan, I will pass the time to you now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. Yes, yeah, so my name is Stefan Larsson. I'm the product manager for protection test uh, working from uh, Megger, Sweden. Uh, and I, I have been working with uh, Megger as a product manager in 13 years. Uh, and I start my career on ABB, where uh, I was uh, working as a relay and control designer and also as a commissioning engineer. So I was on ABB in nine years. And after that, I was working in 17 years, actually, uh, on Schneider Electric, uh, working as a product manager for relay protection and was medium voltage. Uh, and today, as Gray said, we are going to speak about the challenge to test relay protections in renewable power plants and grids. Um, so that's the, the main part for this presentation. And uh, of course, I will speak about the Zurich 900, who can manage this very well uh, in this uh, kind of uh, power stations. So uh, we have a, a very short overview of the Zwerg 900. It's a toolbox for testing substations and you can generate and test free phase protection uh, with that one. It's also for, uh, it have free currents and it have four voltage generators. And it's a complete standalone uh, functionality, which means you don't need to hassle with the PC uh, and have problems to communicate in between. So it's always the unit itself where you can bring to the substation and do your, your testing. And it's very rugged and reliable for field use. Uh, so it's it's made to be on the field in the substation. And uh, it can generate 900 volts and also 105 amp if we put this worker in the single phase mode. So it can go very high in the amplitudes. It is very unique uh, and could be good if uh, you want to test uh, with the Zwerg 900 for primary testing. But also, of course, you, you can go in free phase mode uh, and put the generators to generate individual. Uh, then, then it's very good for doing secondary testing on relays, meters, transducers in the substation. So Zwerg 900 is a uh, complete toolbox, as we said, for testing the substation. You can use it for doing wiring checks. Uh, also, you can use it for testing the signal stations up to the SCADA, uh, the dispatch center, uh, checking from relays uh, and meters up to the SCADA to simulate the power, for example, or energy or energy meter. It's also possible to do primary injection. We can do phase angle measurements. 
with the Zurich 900, measuring direct from uh, the switch gear, for example, in between uh, voltage, one voltage and one current. Uh, we can do polarity tests when we are testing voltage uh, transformers and current transformers. Also burden measurement and ratio test with current transformers and voltage transformers. Also, we can do the CT magnetization test uh, on, on the current transformer to find out the voltage knee point, for example. But of course, uh, we can also do protection relays test. So actually, that's the, the main function with the Zurich 900, but not the only function. So Zurich 900 can do a lot in the substation. Now, if we go to the uh, new renewable uh, power plants, which are coming, uh, with that, the network are going to change. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, for example, wave power is coming. We have wind power. And this is a picture when I was visiting a, a wind power farm, a wind farm in uh, Sweden. It was uh, now I'm standing 120 meter over the on the tower over the ground. And uh, when I was there, we was testing the relay protection, uh, which was in the bottom uh -huh. of the tower, uh, and uh, it was testing it with the Sverker 900. Also, uh, I actually was uh, vis visiting. Uh, uh, solar farm it was actually free solar farms in in kenya uh, it was quite big there was uh, each one was on 30 megawatt uh, and uh, yeah it was quite a lot of power produced from these three substations and uh, again we could see uh, how they was using the Zurich 900 to test this substation so with the new renewable energy power, it's coming uh, also more and more a storage system, uh, like uh, stored batteries uh, from homes or comp industries, companies, or also installed in the network. Also, we have uh, the V2G, the vehicle to grid, uh, when you can also take the power from the, the battery power from uh, the vehicle to the grid. So it's a lot of uh, different sources going to be connected to the to the network that make a lot of changes in the network. So with the new distributed power plants and smart grids, uh, it will be more less batteries in the substation in the small power substations so with that it will come more and more self power relays and uh, that uh, i will speak more about today also in the smart grids and distributed power plants they will require frequency protection like over frequency under frequency and rate of uh, change of frequency, the rock-off protections, for example, because the frequency is very important to have a stable network and a stable supply uh, in the network. When you uh, not to have big outages in the network. So Actually, uh, Sverki 900 is unique in testing frequency protection and self power protections. So uh, this is the, one of the main parts I will speak about now. And uh, it was actually a standard uh, was launched uh, in year 2019. Uh, and that standard was about uh, the functional requirement for frequency protection. IEC 60255-181. And this new standard uh, 
tells uh, how uh, they shall, the relay protection shall the algorithm shall measure the frequency uh, and also it tells how the relay test set should be simulating and how to do when you uh, injecting the frequency the frequency change in a, a relay protection and this new uh, standard was uh, reflecting the reality actually uh, what you have in the network when the, the power generator is uh, going to increase uh, the frequency or the power generator is going to decrease the frequency so it was the main thing with this frequency to make the standard to be uh, equal all over from the relay test sets to the relay also uh, i will speak about this to test the self-powered relay which is a challenge because self-powered relays drain the energy from the secondary current through the ac dc converter in the in itself in the relay the energy conversion generates harmonics that must be absorbed by the test set so that's the challenge when you're testing a self power relays because it take the power from the current transformer and it need this current not only for measure it need it also to be live and be able to work So if you are in a power system, uh, the system frequency is not constant anymore. So the electromechanical power system contains less and less mechanical inertia, stored rotation energy. So inverter based generations, which are coming more and more nowadays with the distributed power plants, they are considered as zero inertia like the wind power photovoltaic battery storage so high variations of produced power because of the weather freeze the frequency could actually change so you need to have a balance in in, in between the supply of the power and the, the, the demand uh, the load management so that's very important nowadays and that's why we more and more go to try to have smart grids which are more functional so we have uh, uh, the new standard uh, in testing frequency protection mm -hmm. and about frequency relays so the the frequency relays in, in the past it had been like this the frequency relays from the different manufacturers have responded to the same frequency variation in different ways while they have the same settings so this have been a problem because from one testing one manufacturer uh, with the same settings you could have one result testing another manufacturer of relay you can have another result so actually it was very confusing it is very confusing still to test uh, frequency relays but with this new standard it will help you to make everything equal uh, in terms of relays and also in terms of how to simulate a frequency change from the relay test set so one thing which are important when a relay test set are doing a, a change in the in the frequency when uh, you're simulating a change in the frequency one important thing is that it that the relay test set shall not introduce a phase shift mm -hmm. like here on this picture we can see 
uh, assimilation, which is very common when testing over frequency protections. Uh, you have a pre fault state and a fault state. Uh, you simulate, let's say, for example, 50 hertz, and then you suddenly go to 53 hertz. And then you will see if the relay are reacting and you're measuring the time. Uh, if you're doing that, uh, you could, the relay, because this is not a realistic change in the network, uh, the relay could measuring very wrong uh, result. You will have a wrong result that could be possible depending on what kind of manufacturer it is who have made this relay. So it's very confusing to, to do this. Also, in this uh, standard, uh, it should be formalized, the meaning of a variable frequency. So it should be a very smooth change, which means that uh, when changing, it should not, uh, the frequency, it should not be suddenly, it should be smooth uh, to make a realistic change according to what we have in our networks. So when you make a ramp, and that's uh, what we recommend to use when testing frequency protection, to use the ramp function in, in the relay test set. This ramp should be smooth. And uh, that, that means that uh, the frequency should be changed in microseconds uh, when you're ramping. Uh, it should not be uh, changed in pieces like in milliseconds, for example. Every, peri per every, every cycle or every half cycle or something like that, like a, a staircase. That's not allowed uh, according to the new frequency standard. So this is one important thing when you make uh, fr from the relay test sets, when you simulate a frequency change, it should be very smooth. So uh, also when you're testing uh, frequency protection, for example, over frequency, you maybe start from the normal frequency, let's say 50 hertz, and you, you, you set the speed of the change, in this case 0.5 hertz per second. Uh, then you run uh, the ramp, you start run the ramp uh, and the frequency change, and uh, then you will reach the set value of the frequency protection and the frequency uh, protection will start. Uh, and then you will reach the operation of the frequency uh, protection output. And then you stop the timer. And then uh, uh, you will have the time for the frequency protection. So this is uh, the recommendation from this uh, standard, how to do a frequency change. You shall uh, uh, do it in the ramp instrument to make a ramp, and you shall not do, do it as a sudden change, like pre-fault fault. So that's uh, common, uh, what they recommend here. And if you are using the Sverik 900, you will have the possibility in the ramp instrument. You set the ramp and run it, and then you have the possibility to measure the time. So it's very easy to do this in the ramp instrument with the Sverik 900. So we have make uh, uh, application note, which you can find on the Megger webpage, uh, for example about how to test frequency relays according to the standard IEC 60255-181. So you can read this 
uh, everything about this, how to test with the Zurich 900 a frequency protection. So that's uh, important. Also, we have uh, uh, now we are going to the next challenge uh, when you're testing relays, and that's the uh, the challenge which are coming more and more uh, with the self power relays. Uh, so in in the past, uh, we have a very simple and cheap relays, uh, which didn't need to have any DC power. Uh, and this uh, only need to, they was running on the, the current from the current transformers. Uh, it was the electromechanical relays. So the ID is good and, and the energy from the measured secondary quantities. So that, that's what's working. But they required uh, very periodic maintenance and do not they didn't have any possibility to communicate to SCADA or RTU. They are not numerical with no self-supervisions, no communication, no different, no different setting groups and so on. So it's uh, a lot of disadvantage with this. Uh, and they are also big and they are not cheap anymore, actually. Anyway, no doubt they are beautiful piece in our, of equipment from the past. So nowadays we have the self-powered relays, digital relays. They are a reality. And here we can see some uh, yeah, different manufacturers of self-power relays. So self-power relays is a, uh, yeah, it's a test challenge. Of course, uh, the first thing you need, you need to have power from the current generator when you test the self-power relays. So, yeah, self-power relays drain the energy from the secondary current through the AC-DC converters. So the energy conversion generates harmonics that must be absorbed of the test set. So when the relay test set, uh, generate uh, it's a lot of distor distortion uh, of this uh, sign in the sinus wave and this will make uh, wrong uh, could be ma making wrong readings in the protections so uh, that's a, a, a big problem because you set for example on one amp to run it uh, uh, from the relay test set, but actually the relay is measuring 0.7 amps. And uh, you will get wrong result actually. So, also the, the, the challenge with testing cell power relays are the highly non-linear and time-varying load and the control circuit must be able to keep the injected current constant with this non-linear and time variant load. So that's uh, the tricky thing uh, with this. And uh, with the Zwerk 900, we have the op opportunity to test uh, free phase also, because normally that's the best way to, to test the self power relays because then it can take power from uh, all the free phases, which it's uh, helping the self power relays more to get the power, the power to itself. Uh, but with Zwerich 900, uh, it's possible to run in single phase mode also with the current generator. And single phase mode means that we connect the current generator in series or parallel. And if we, if we do that, we increase the, the power three times, or we increase the current amplitude three times. Uh, so it's a summation. Uh, so that's an advantage. We have a very good flexibility uh, to test. 
and also we can of course run it in medial the current generator is in in medial mode and then we get uh, and do the free phase testing so we have uh, a lot of flexibility with the circuit 900 when testing cell power relays another thing which is very important when you're testing cell power relays is the binary input because the cell power relays are able to deliver the energy to trip so it, it is the the relay itself who deliver the, the energy to the striker in the circuit breaker to the jump tripping coil in the breaker and that that needs power uh, so uh, so we have some uh, other additional uh, accessories they are able to accumulate the energy trip uh, from a conventional tripping coil so uh, this voltage and this power from the trip output trip uh, on the relay uh, should the relay test set be able to detect so that's uh, important and uh, uh, with the Sverker 900 we can be able to set the voltage uh, on the binary input also we have a debounce filter with the settable time because sometimes the cell power relays is giving a spike voltage before the tripping coming uh, and that could be disturbing disturbing also so if you have a filter to filter the uh, output and the tripping output uh, and that we also have in the spherical 900 so that's very good So amplifier need to be robust against uh, harmonics and protected against harmonics, not to destroy the to destroy the the, the relay test sets and the transistors in the relay test sets which are generating the current. So that's very important. Also, it's important to have uh, advanced and adaptive non-linear real-time control loops uh, in the, uh, for controlling the current generators when you have a lot of disturbance. So it must be possible to, to test the cell power relays also have uh, in the free phase environment. Uh, because sometimes uh, you need that, you don't succeed to, to, to test the cell power relays, maybe uh, in, with one phase, single phase. So in the Sverker 900, we also have the possibility to have a graphical whistling in the Sverker 900 uh, to, to see where uh, the test point is for an inverse curve, for example. So actually, when testing cell power relays, no special setting or configurations is done because uh, everything is there in the unit itself. We have taken care of this when we was developing the Sverker 900. And also, it's easy to use uh, and to run. It's, uh, the advantage with using the Sverker 900. Uh, we have also made a, a technical guide for uh, how to test cell power relays with Sverker 900. Uh, it describes uh, how to do, uh, and uh, it's regarding two uh, cell power relays called VIC 1 and VIP uh, 1. So this you can find on the MEGA website. So the, the good thing with the 
Zwerg 900 is that it is very user friendly. So you don't need to have any special training uh, to use it if you are a relay technician guy and have worked with this before. Uh, it's high speed testing. You will, it will be time saving. Uh, and it's it's good feeling. It's like driving a car. A few settings and to set so before running the test, and it's with direct response. So it will go very quick. Uh, I will now go through some more uh, functions in the Zwerg 900 uh, and the control panels. Uh, so some more information about Zwerg 900 and. The, you are controlling it from the front, the, the touch screen, uh, and you have a knob. You can manually increase or decrease amplitudes uh, of voltage, current, or frequencies, uh, or phase angles. Uh, also, you can connect a mouse or a keyboard in the USB port. Uh, if you would like, to change voltage generators or current generators, you can do that to put them in series mode, or you can uh, put them, for example, like here we have the current generators. They are connected in parallel mode. So you have an output of 105 amps, uh, but you can go in series mode and you can go in free phase mode, like individual generating. And here we have the voltage uh, channel. You can be, in this case, it's in serious mode. Then you can deliver 900 volt from the generators. But uh, we can also be in parallel mode. We can be in uh, individual mode, uh, free phase mode. So uh, if you are in individual mode with the current generators, uh, we can run on each generator up to 35 amps uh, on each generator. Uh, and if you are on the voltage individual mode on the voltage generators, we can run up to uh, 300 volt on each generator. So, and uh, practically when you're changing uh, from serial mode, parallel or individual mode, using the jumpers, which is coming together with the Zwerg 900. So we have also four binary inputs, uh, and we have uh, two binary outputs, normal open, normal close. Could be used for simulating a, a breaker, for example, when testing out reclosing. We have a multimeter. Everybody who knows the Sverker one phase tester, uh, Sverker 715, 780, uh, we have the same multimeter there, ammeter, voltmeter, and they could calculate in between each other, like impedance or cos phi or uh, uh, also phase angles in between these two inputs. We have an extra timer, uh, could be measuring an extra time, for example, on the auxiliary contact or whatever. So this is the start input for that, and this is the stop uh, input for that timer. And it's always accessible here this time. And the current and voltage is always accessible here in the bottom of the screen, voltage and current. And you can see uh, like impedance and this other measurement calculated from these two if you push here on these errors here. So uh, this uh, from this USB port, you can also load the test reports. Uh, we have one in CSV format, and we have another one in another format. So it's two files. Uh, with the other one, uh, together with the piece of software called Zwerg Viewer, uh, you can get the PDF format on the test report. And uh, it could also have graphical, uh, you could also show graphical results in that uh, uh, Sverke Viewer PDF format. 
We have three uh, models of Sverker 900. We have the basic, we have the standard, we have the expert one. So basic is including uh, the main and pre-fault fault. The standard one is also including the ramp, sequencer and the CT magnetization. And the expert one is including all, and that's also including the impedance instrument, which uh, could be used for testing uh, uh, distance protections, for example. It's like manual testing of a distance protection. So this is uh, how uh, the, the home uh, menu looks like on Sverik 900. This is a file manager uh, for test reports. Here is the configuration of the generators. And here is the system configuration of data time and language and so on. And always you can see in the bottom, you can see the ammeter and the voltmeter and also the extra timer is here. So this is how it looks like. And now I will go through these uh, six instrument very shortly. Uh, so we have the main instrument, it looks like this. Uh, you can do timing test, you can de do determination of pick up and drop off of a relay, uh, tripping contact. Uh, you can just set and inject and measure a voltage current uh, or whatever you would like to do. It's very easy to work here, uh, very understandable, user friendly. Uh, and you, here is the measuring of the time, for example. If you would like to save test, you save it here. If you would like to open a save test, you can op open it from here. Uh, here is the pre fault fault instrument. Looks like this. Here you set the pre fault wireless here. So you push there. And then you set the fault values uh, here, and how long time, for example. And then you're ready to go, you push here. And then when you would like to play this, you push on the play button. So that's a pre-fault fault simulation. And you will have the time, tripping time, for example, here, if you're measuring the time. This is when you're testing current transformer and doing a CT magnetization test. Uh, so you magnet do a magnetization curve to find out uh, the voltage knee point of the current transformer. So you can be in automatic mode. In the automatic mode, you just push the play button. You connect, of course, according to uh, this, what the screen say, say, how you shall connect, and then uh, you push the play button, and then you will start injecting the voltage. It will go up the curve uh, automatic, and when it finds the voltage knee point, it will go down, and then it will do a more precisely calculation of uh, the voltage knee point. So when it's going down, he will show the voltage knee point. And then uh, automatic, he will do the demagnetization complete down to zero for on the, on the uh, voltage, with the voltage. And then uh, you, you are ready with the test. If you do manual, you use the knob on the Sverik 900, turn it up until uh, the Sverik 900 in the screen will tell you to turn it anti-clockwise again. Uh, and then you need to push on the knob on the knob each time you would like to have uh, where you would like to have the, the points. So when you do it manual, you need to active by yourself, push the knob to take the, the points, the test points. Okay, then we have a ramping instrument. Uh, this, for example, as I was telling about, is, is to be used when testing frequency protection. 
and the good thing uh, is uh, when, uh, that you have uh, the trip time here so you can measuring the time here so uh, for example uh, when you work with this instrument you tell where to start so you push here and tell where to start uh, the ramp next step is to tell which speed and what uh, you would like to to change for example if you would like to change the frequency uh, in in the speed uh, or if you would like to change only the current or one current or voltage or even the phase angle you can you can change whatever that you will set here then you tell where to stop and then you push here then you're ready to go and then you push the play button and then you run this test okay so then we have uh, the sequence instrument the sequence instrument is like the pre-fault fault instrument but in the pre-fault fault we have only two states and uh, in uh, the sequence instrument we have 16 states when you have that many stages, you could do uh, uh, simulations like uh, testing an auto recloser, for example, or uh, restriking a fault or motor start or uh, this kind of things. So it could be, be used when you need a lot of states uh, to make a very long sequence. And then we have the last instruments that uh, the impedance instrument that's where you can test uh, distance protection for example so you're working in the impedance plane uh, and you are setting uh, your values in the impedance resistance reactance or phase angle and the Sverker 900 will calculate the what kind of current and voltage it should generate according to your settings. So you set these values, whatever you would like, in the impedance plane, and Sverker will cal calculate by himself what voltage and what current he will inject into the, for example, distance protection. So it's quite easy. Uh, yeah, so Zurich 900 is very unique in the market because it can cover to test uh, different load uh, and different kind of uh, hardware, hard, hardware in the relay protections. Because the burden could be very different in between what kind of hardware it is. So if you have the electromechanical relays, uh, they are having a inductive non-linear it is a inductive non-linear load which is sometimes very difficult because you need to have a lot of power and if you are on quite low current like one or two amps uh, it's difficult to get that power at that very low current but Sverker like 900 can manage this Static relays uh, is difficult because it could be resistance, uh, quite high re resistance. Um, sophisticated, sophisticated numerical relays, they are some, they are very low resistance load, but uh, the tricky thing with, with them are that they are very accurate, uh, especially when you're testing on low current. Uh, you need to be quite accurate and uh, with the Sverker 900 we can deliver a very accurate current at very low current for example uh, we can deliver uh, 5 milliamps without any problems <clears throat> so it's uh, very sensitive and very accurate at low current but it is very strong uh, Anyhow, so it's a combination of everything with the Sverker 900. And as I have been speaking about, the 
it can also test self-powered relays. Uh, so that's uh, the unique thing with the Zwerg 900. A lot of power, but also sensitive and being able to test accurate and low current. It's covering all kinds of relays. We have uh, also uh, uh, we have also a lot of uh, uh, application notes uh, you can find on our web page. Uh, it's, for example, here we, we can see how to test negative sequence uh, unbalance protection, uh, how to test direction of uh, fault, how to test impedance measurement based protection, this is uh, how to test this distance protection. Uh, so this is uh, how you can, uh, and also we have how to test current transformer, all kind of tests you do on the current transformer, uh, for example. So this is uh, how you can use Zwerg 900 to do different tests. Uh, and this is very appreciated. Also, if you go on the web page, you can find technical specification, data sheet, user guides, application notes. We have technical guides also and, and videos. So this is just a recommendation that you can find. We have, uh, we are no now making a campaign for distributed energy resources as we can, as we call it. Uh, and we have a landing page there uh, where you can find testimonial videos. Uh, you can see uh, about how to use Zwerg 900 in uh, photovoltaic plants. Uh, yeah, and application notes and these kind of things, podcast and whatever. Also, this is very good for you because uh, we have on YouTube a channel where you can find uh, information, uh, videos about Zwerg 900, how to use it in the substation, how to use it in the PV plants, and also we have uh, more than 50 how to do videos, uh, uh, how to test relays, current transformers, voltage transformers. So this was what I uh, recommend. Okay, so now I shall, uh, I must try to, to stop this. We shall see. Uh... Yeah, I shall do like this. Uh, and now... Okay, so... I think... Yes, Grace, uh, I, uh, I don't know yes. if we have some questions here. Uh, yes, all right. So uh, now uh, it comes to the end of the webinar. If you have any questions, you may type into the question box, which is on the left of your screen. And for those of you who are leaving, please remember to fill in the survey, which is on the right hand side. And um, also, after you fill in the survey, you may download the attendance survey kit, which is at the bottom control panel, the icon on the right hand side. And we will spend about five minutes to answer any questions you may have. You can start typing into the chat box, so we will read all the questions for you. All right, Stefan, uh, here we got the first question. Yes. Okay, it's asking, are uh, all self-powered relays giving distortion and measure wrong current when testing? Uh, not, uh, yeah, all self all self power uh, relays have uh, this problem. Uh, and, but more or less, uh, so, these uh, uh, relays, uh, some of them can be very difficult to test, like 
if you inject, for example, from the relay test set one amp, you set one amp and inject it, then uh, then you it, it's measuring like 0.7 amps. And if you're testing uh, inverse curve, of course, uh, you will have uh, wrong time uh, and it will not be according to what you expect. So that's uh, very confusing. So uh, all re uh, cell power relays have, have actually this problem, problem more or less from different manufacturers. All right. And the second question we have is, um, can we synchronize two units together? Uh, I mean, Sverke 900 uh, uh, is not it's not possible to synchronize. Uh, and I really, yeah, I, I, can, I can understand maybe why uh, the question is coming up because they would like to have six current maybe. Uh, that's the reason, but but it's actually it's not possible uh, to synchronize the two units. That's a problem. Uh, but uh, what we we don't know what's coming in the future, so that could be possible maybe. Okay. But not and now. Next, okay, and the next question is: Do you have power module for the Spurgeon nine hundred in cases like? Commissioning test, considering that during commissioning test, um, commissioning substation, for example, are not yet powered from the grid. Uh, okay, okay, okay. What I uh, what I recommend if they uh, would like to have a power, we don't have a power unit uh, from Megger. If I answer direct on the question. But what I recommend is that they buy one from, uh, it's a lot of suppliers of uh, battery inverters. Uh, you can find it very easy. Uh, and uh, uh, if they buy one, I will recommend that the power on that battery inverter is like 1.3 uh, watt, uh, 1,000, Three hundred watt. Uh, that it could have the maximum power like that. Uh, then it will be enough to to do all the tests, and you will be able to deliver one hundred five amps, for example, maximum from from uh, the Sverker nine hundred. So uh, I know a, a lot of people which are using Sverker nine hundred or Sverker seven fifty, which are using this kind of battery inverters and. Uh, they like uh, it and it's quite cheap to buy it from wherever and uh, they like it because uh, uh, always uh, they don't need it. Uh, so if they don't need it, they don't need to bring it. So, I mean, if you have it in it in the unit itself, the battery inverter, then you need to bring it all the time. Okay, that's the answer. Okay, thank you. And the next one is, can the Sverker 900 be used for testing the differential line reading 87L with two Sverker 900s? Uh, you, you disappeared a little bit, Grace. Can you repeat? Um, yes. Uh, can the Sverker 900 be used for testing the differential line relay? 87L, which uh, with two focus 900 together. Uh, okay, if if it is a differential uh, relay like a pilot wire, uh, uh, then uh, actually, uh, with G it's 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 not uh, actually now it's not possible. Uh, but we are looking on it and it's quite easy to arrange to have a GPS. And uh, so I think uh, within the future, uh, we will do that quite soon. All right, okay. And the next one is, 
How to mitigate this error you mentioned while testing self power relays? And what are the best way to test this type of relays? Yes, uh, uh, how to, yes. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the thing, uh, if you have this kind of error, uh, I mean, uh, when testing uh, cell power relays, uh, it is a problem because it's the relay test set who, who not can deliver uh, the right uh, current, actually, uh, because, the, because it's too much distortion. So it, it, it's a problem uh, to test uh, cell power relays. You have a lot of distortion. I know in the past some uh, relay manufacturers uh, of cell power relays have some kind of a conversion table. Uh, uh, I mean, to, to, to work with uh, for uh, when using a certain uh, relay test set. Uh, but this is a problem. So with the Sverik 900, you don't have this problem. And this, uh, our message uh, that, uh, yeah, if you use the Sverik, Sverik 900, you don't have this problem. Everything works by itself, autonomous. Okay, all right. And I think here's the last question. How do you test a differential relay seeing this unit only outputs three phase currents? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, as I said, uh, if you would like to test a differential relay and uh, if you would like to test the full characteristics, uh, that uh, and that means the characteristics of the BS curve. Uh, in the modern relays, uh, some of the modern relays, which uh, have in the algori algorithm the stereo sequence current, uh, which some uh, modern relays have, not everybody, then you need to have six current. But if uh, th this uh, modern relay don't have it, or if it is an older relay, you can test phase uh, like one phase, which means you inject two current and test the differential relay one phase. That's, that's actually possible. Uh, but I know in some countries, they don't test uh, actually the BS characteristics, even uh, on the six, uh, on the differential trans uh, protection, which are measuring the zero sequence current, uh, because it's uh, not, uh, it's more, uh, they think that it's more, uh, uh, test from the uh, a type it's more a type test and it's not it's not belongs to to do a field test but it's it's up to the customer to do it and if they would like to do a full characteristics test on the modern re, uh, relay protection they need to have uh, yeah six current okay Okay, uh, thank you, Stefan. I guess we don't have any more questions. If you have any f questions later on, you can send us email to megahongkong at mega.com. Or you can also visit uh, mega.com slash webinars for official webinars. And just a uh, reminder, please commit the survey and download the survey kit before you go. On next Thursday, which is 18th of May, uh, we have another webinar. Topic is keep your motor running. Uh, the time is 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you're available, you can go to our website to register for the webinar. So thank you again for attending. Thank you, Stefan, and also uh, uh, for the presentation, and also uh, dancers, Mark, as well. So uh, thank you all, and hope to see you again next time. Take care. Thank bye -bye. you very much.
Thank you very much for listening.